taking place at the same time as aforementioned events in front of the Kamato Technical Academy front gate. Sparks fly as Musashi's blades meet yours. Your skills are on par with each other's. The young swordsman looks as though he's enjoying himself and opens up space between the two of you. <laughs> You're pretty good! Mm, maybe I should start taking this seriously. Or not. Nah. Guess I can push myself a little more. This here is a once in a lifetime chance to make sure you know just how strong we are. Even as he speaks, Misashi begins drawing the sword sheathed at the sides, as well as the one on his back, to add to two already in his hands. He is now holding five swords in total. Taste my steel! He throws four of his five blades right at you. What the? I'll just have to deflect him. Yeah. You fall back, def deftly deflecting the swords with your own. However, Take this! Musashi swings at you with not only the blade he has in his hand, but also the sheath that was strapped to his back. Oh, that's pretty crafty. Really? You're using sheaths too? Here I come! Better get your head in the game or you're gonna end up without it. As though he planned all this out, Musashi grasps one of the blades still strapped into the ground and slices at you with it. Damn! As you somehow parry his blow, another vicious slice comes at you from the right, his right. From the right, which you counter purely by reflex. Damn, you're pretty good! That would've ended anybody else! Musashi swings at you with yet another blade pulled from seemingly nowhere, and you repel it with a loud clang. At long last, you notice what's going on, with another blade flying down at you from above Musashi. Whoa, what the heck? What is this? Strategy. Those five swords. Oh, I get it. <laughs> you know it's pretty quickly. How long do you think you can hold off all five of us, though? <laughs> ah, there! Musashi switches effortlessly between the swords he holds. Swords thrust into the ground and swords thrown into the air. Sometimes he's even attacking the sheath. It almost looks like a dance. You defend yourself desperately from the relentless five-bladed assault. After a flurry of incoming strikes, this is it! Musashi slashes you with an unguarded wrist. At, Mus Musashi slashes at your unguarded wrist. Arc! A loud clang rings out and Musashi's blade is repelled. That was pretty close. Who is this kid? The one who saved you from the onslaught is none other than... Ark. Using their chain, Ark knocked Musashi's sword in away, stopping the attack before it reached you. Uh, I wanted a one-on-one -on -one sword fight. Guess none of us really was ever really on our own, though. Thanks, Ark. You don't need to thank me. This is why we formed an alliance. Still, though, who is this kid? I tried to restrain him with my chains, but all I could do was deflect his sword. You're not some typical brat, aren't you? Hmm. If you don't want to answer, how would I change the question? What's your business, my friend? If you don't answer... It's not so much business with your friend, per se, as well. Business with whoever comes to Kamata. To put it simply, we are a samurai for hire. You're an employee of Kamata. Did you say we? Yeah. It seems like there's only one of you so-called samurai for hire. But did you possibly call for reinforcements? Nah, we're all right here. All five of us. I'm sorry, I don't think I quite understand. Ugh, fine, I got it. Time to give you a good show then. I'll bring my five different styles together into one, just like that ring on your dragon's noggin. So the ring is what is holding everything together. Alright, like, that's Musashi's proposition. Double sword advance, fleety clouds! As Musashi cries out, his five swords shine in various colors. His swords are glowing. Be careful, Arthur. I bet you understand now. You better be ready. Good. Musashi's attacks are even more refined than before. Sounds turns to roars in your ear, and steel turns to brittle. Musashi uses one sword after the other. They seem to attack you with a will of their own. Whoa, shit. 
He's so strong. What? What the? I can't get a grasp of this kid's sin might be. My chains are unsure of what to do. It's like they keep on switching targets to bind. Yeah, right, Mark. You don't bind. I'll sever gravity itself. Boundless tail! Much like when you dance through the air with Zabanya. Your blade slices through gravity and you fly with Sashi. Epic! Ha! <laughs> you sure got a powerful ruler there. That said... Hua? We ourselves have experienced the, the blade of one who could strike a f flitting swallow from the sky. Yours does not even compare. Ah! He deflected me. I can't read his movements. Are you alright? This quid is quite an, the adversary. Those who can't even work together effectively versus two of the exact opposite. Determining who will win is a simple equation. Are you talking about me and- wait, no. The ones you were talking about. Do your swords contain a different person's memories? Are you extracting their memories to talk with them? Can the peanut gallery- <laughs> Can the peanut gallery pipe down? We're busy talking to Arthur. <laughs> there are five of us, all with different roles. By our powers combined, we are the Dragon of the Two Blades. Two Blades? You're the vessel we've seen that goes beyond that. So you see, we can't let you go without testing ourselves against you. Now, that are swords cross. It's almost scary how interested this kid is in you. This is also sudden. Someone who can draw the memories out of multiple sacred artifacts and even talk with those personas. Could we possibly draw the memories out of my family's sacred artifacts? Core, if you don't get start getting serious, old chap, we're going to finish this without you, what? Was that an attempt at sarcasm? The hell are you talking about? No way you're being serious. You cut away the part of being your own self, your power away. Cut away myself? Don't you get it? I'm talking about that dragon you were babbling to. Uh, dragon? Are you talking about Lola Solomon? Lola Solomon, you say? It matters not what you choose to call the name of yourself. It is, however, baffling that you would choose to remain this way. You would cast aside your own power, your sword, before engaging in the battle for your life? You might as well be s sever your own limb. My sword's right here! I haven't cast anything aside. Even so, you've bought one sword right now, and it's my eyes to see me. Yet, there, you have another, one which you have cast aside. If it were the old me, I'd have gone to cut you down where you stand. Do you think little Salmon is another blade? But I can't summon him in a battle zone. And he's... You can't call it? Why? What's... That what someone told you? One does wonder if you ever so much as tried. What? You're trying to say it doesn't exist if you can't see it? That you can't call on anything from the other side? But <laughs> if that were so, then we'd not be able to call on the others residing our swords, yes? It shouldn't be possible to manipulate the internal and exterior workings of our hard metal blades, correct? I... I, I knew it! Did you, what did you just see, Musashi? Don't tell me your... the memories in your artifact. You are swapping places with the memories that reside within your swords, aren't you? Would that not cause you to go insane? Uh, why did you get caught up on that one little detail after everything I just said? There you have it. We five live here within these blades. We buy gone memories of these blighters who would have lived in the other worlds. We five switch in and out of this young chap, from boy to sword and back again. Humans have two arms, so are limited to two blades. As such, we are limited to utilizing our, the power of only two swords at once. Teach me your ways, master! It's simple, really. The child has no soul in the first place. I mean, I did read that in his uh, research file. And so he sucked us all up, like a sponge dropped in a puddle. Enough of this pointless chatter. You want to learn more, you gotta beat us first. You ready? I'm expecting a good show out of you this time. Misashi brandishes as two of his blades. The other three swords he stabbed into the ground with an arm's reach. I see, so he can only use two rules at the same time. And only summon two some memories at the same Or maybe just one of the memories from one of those blades at the same time. Within the boy's body. And the other three he can switch around. 
Not that one would, not that one who doesn't even trust in all of their blades could ever hope to hold their own against us. I don't trust in all my swords. Again with little Salmon? Who else could I be talking about? Master, do you not trust me? You don't trust me? Ark, stand back. Leave this to me. I'm praying for your victory, Arthur. Ark does away with their chains as they say this. They then move further back so as not to interfere with their fight. You and Masashi stand like cowboys at dusk, eyes locked. Let's see what you've got, Arison. You're ready your blade and slowly exhale, preparing yourself for the impending fight. I suppose that I... I really don't know Bill Salmon that well. Huh? Whoa, what? What is that thing? Why? Why? Wait a second, Master! I suppose he has a point. He has been acting a bit weird. I felt like he was hiding something. Ta-da! Whoa! Does it feel good to be out of there? Master! How can I be of service? There must be something. Your wish is my command. Leave it to me! I'm a level 3 baller, so I know what I'm doing. However... Find the player, huh? I read you loud and clear. Now that we've run him into once, I can find him again for sure. Leave it to me! Look at all these enemies. They're multiplying like rabbits. Master! Are you really gonna uh, go ahead with this? Uh, let's do this. I'm all riled up. I'll dive into an ocean of blood for you. I'm a level three battering ram, baby. Rah! Salmon has been there for me, even when I had nobody else. Didn't you say you were going to have a strategy meeting with Shiro and the others today after school? Uh, of course, I plan on eavesdropping, so there's nothing for you to worry about. Now, off to your class with you. A student's number one duty is their studies. Go get him! Ahem! It happens to be... It happens to have been my plan. I saw that gold leaf and it all came to me in a burst of inspiration. Oh yeah, he did save us from Hockeyman. Securing that massive amount of gold leaf was hard work, you know? I'll be expecting a sufficient reward later. Mofu Mofu. When you need me, call me! No matter where you are, no matter how far, or else I'll get paranoid and cry from neglect! Bill Salmon was crying. He begged me to trust him. That's why I will trust him. I will always trust him. I swear it. Yeah. You'll ring this hilt of your sword in your hands. Then? Come on out, little Salmon! Is it real? Is it real? Don't, please, please be real. Your sword reacts to the cry of your soul, and your hand seems to detach itself from the hilt. Huh. You hold nothing in your hand, yet you can feel something begging for you to release your hold. I thought your hand was empty, but... Ark sees a dragon's tail in your open hand? Only for an instant? Almost like an apparition? Oh ho! So you can do it, but with a, with but a word, he caught the dragon's tail. My my, that's quite the disposition. However, I see that you've come to believe that alone. Yeah. You once again grasp the hilt with both hands. However, when you look down, you see a dragon's shadow overlaid with that of your sword. Boundless tail! <laughs> the double bladed which the double blade which you attack possesses the power to cut through the most through space and gravity. You leap through the air, bearing down on Musashi in the blink of an eye. <laughs> she blocked it? This is the first time that she Musashi, who until now had effortlessly sidestepped all of your attacks, is forced to block with two of his own swords. <laughs> Couldn't dodge, so I had to block you. 
Ken Charlie give you the win so easy though. You and Masashi stand face to face, just as you begin to think you and he might be equally matched. What? My sword! There are cracks forming your sword, Arthur. A declaration of faith that is solely one side cannot exceed the strength of that one side. You know nothing, yet you maintain your faith. Faith alone, however, is not enough. Ha! Musashi drops two of the swords instead forcing you skyward. Your sword flies from your hands, plugs so high into the air that you lose sight of it. Ha ha! If that's all you've got, you're never gonna grab onto more than the tail of this old dual-wielding dragon. Musashi scoops up two swords from the ground, lunging for your throat. Arson! Art can only watch as you're about to be scored, and that frantic moment. None of you even see it coming. What? Oh, it's Zolotl! Twisted Bastion! A massive tree clo cloaked in wind appears, splitting the ground between you and Masashi. Uh, uh, are you right, Arison? Jeepers, Zolotl! <laughs> Jeepers! <laughs> From Rokongi, what are you doing here? Come on, not another damn distraction. We finally had something good going here. Ah, oh, hell. Now there's one coming from this end. Hold it right there, Masashi. Stop this right now. They have an appointment. They're guests. Uh... Musashi sheathes his sword, a wry smile spreading across his lips as he hears that voice from behind. Whoa, you scared me. I just shared up, showed up and happened to see you were in hot water, Arison. I'm so happy that you're okay. If you weren't, Mr. Talkman would have spanked me so hard. You really jumped a gun on this. What would have happened if he didn't stop you? What? I was just doing my job, keeping intruders from getting onto school grounds. You should be complimenting me right now, don't you think? On a job well done? I suppose you have a point. <laughs> I guess I'll, at least I gotta show you. I gotta show your strength there. Only the best for my employer, as always. So long as you know that, all is well. I don't think I'm following. Cheers for helping me out there. I couldn't have the boss man think if I don't pull my weight around here, eh? That was all just a sales pitch. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. You want to put food on the table? You gotta show what a useful tool you can be. You may also consider this a sore presentation for a potential future employer, if you understand me. So, Zolotl, what's your business here? Uh, well, Mr. Hawkman told me to come, so I... We can talk later. It seems that you all have business with my guild. You can call me Amatsumara, the of the Kamata Crafters. Nice to see you again... Did I see him before? Mm, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, I mean, we saw each other maybe in some event before. I don't know. Oh, it's you, Arson. Here, I'm introducing myself like some absent mind. Bah, ha, ha. No point in standing around here, shooting the breeze. Come on in. You're all welcome guests. Our guild master should be back soon, so I'll introduce you then, alright? Salmon. Master, I'm your. Nobody hears as little Solomon's voice drifts on the wind from nowhere, fading into white noise. Oh god, I'm tired. Back to Shinjuku. Earlier that day, the summoners split into five groups, each with their own tasks. One of those groups, Shiro and Kengo, made their way to. I apologize for the wait. Welcome to the best host club in town. Night Emperor. Come, forget the burdens of the day and enjoy the gentle caress of the night. Oi, Shiro. You got the coin for this, right? Don't you? You seriously think I got uh, coin to toss about? Uh, right. Well, we're still high school students, so I'll take the complimentary tea. <laughs> I'll take some water. Ugh. 
Thank you for your patience. Our number one host will make his appearance shortly. Let's have a round of applause for the King of the Night. Give them a show that they won't soon forget, King. Seven colored spotlights flit about as energetic music fills the club. A figure appears on the stage as a cloudy, as a cloud of dry ice steam obscures everyone's vision, basking in the hoots and hollers of the surrounding hosts. The figure raises a single hand in the air and snaps his finger. Ah, uh, eyes so captivating they melt even the hottest of the hot. A smile so alluring it could turn anyone into a willing slave. Whoa. I present to you Kabukicho's very own King of the Night, Tsukuyomi. Tsukuyawi. I apologize for having kept you all waiting. It takes time to prepare my entrance. The club is closed at the moment. Is it? Is this always how you greet your guests? Why, of course. My appearance must be flashy, impactful beyond belief. Be it my club or another's, hours of business or those le leisure, I must announce my presence. He does this everywhere he goes? What have I got myself into? <laughs> Look at Shio's face. Hmm. Tetsuya, get a grip. You've been glaring at me since I got here. You wanna have a go right here now? I thought I told you not to come near Kabukichu, so why? Shut it. It's not like I wanted to come to the stinking club. Kengo. Tetsuya, may I ask you to refrain from insulting our guests? Furthermore, Tetsuya, am I right to assume you don't actually want to bring unnecessary conflict to Kabukicho? Yeah, you're right. A dirty lap like me wouldn't disobey the wishes of the face of the sleepless city. Good boy, Tetsuya. Oh, but I do love that sullen, childish manner about you. <laughs> Did he just slap him? <laughs> Tsukuyomi whispers something into Tetsuya's ear. The delinquent then awkwardly shoots him away, seals his lips, and scoots one step further away. <laughs> what was that? Was he like... <laughs> oh my gosh, was, this, was he just flirting or <laughs> talking about what they're gonna do after? <laughs> Jeez. Now, may I assume that you came here to forge a Pierce peace treaty with us outlaws? I do hope that you won't mind my standing in proxy for the master of the Cabbage Kichu Guild in this. That is fine. As an officer for the summoners acting on behalf of our own guild master, I too am authorized to enact any treaty. Mm. Is something the matter? Tsukiyomi, the acting guild master, turns to Chiro. A gentle smile set on his face. It's nothing. I just find it difficult to believe that this could go so smoothly. Is that so? I myself knew. How wonderful this meeting with the two of you would be, that is. You knew? I just can't believe that the Tsukuyomi is a- I just can't believe that the Tsukuyomi is a member of the Kabukicho Guild. They're famous, even at Shinjuku Academy. Famous? As a student acting as a host? Or possibly because I am the scandal who rarely shows his face at school. How about both? Shut it, Kengo. No, no, no. That's not what I, I meant. It's not... I'm sure my lack of attendance at school makes me infamous. Even my guild duties, I leave to other members of the guild. The King of the Night, Kabukicho's number one host, Tsukiyomi, is also a useless lump of flesh who barely twitches a muscle until after the sun goes down. <laughs> if, if even you think that, then what if you tried working a bit more, you nocturnal majesty? Ah, welcome back, Tetsuwax. Were you sure to properly welcome those fr from the west? Sure did. I j just got back from the front lines. Suzuka and the others are hoarding off right now. They had to rescue some of the Uenigil too. So, I was told to let you know they'd probably be held up for a while. I'm pretty sure I've said this before, but... I really don't like fighting alongside those who aren't prepared to die. I don't trust them, you know. You know that, right? 
I know, I know. Now then, my dear guests, I believe this serves us an answer to your request. Do you mean to say that you're too busy fighting off the politics and the warfare of that guild in the West to help us out, correct? That is precisely what I am saying. I believe you'll find that the 21 remaining world representatives will have much the same to say. As it stands, nothing you can do will win over the majority of them, and there's much else that deserves your attention. The representatives are likely utilizing knowledge gained through past loops to prepare and secure members to vital to their victory. That's quite convenient. We can make use of such times to gather information and plan countermeasures. One as right as yourself should understand that there is far more to be done than simply following the right procedures. Seating himself comfortably on the sofa, well, Tsukuyomi raises a hand to his face and stares knowingly into Shiro's eyes. You summoners lack access to information from previous loops. You lack an ally whose secret artifact is, in essence, a pillar. Come out to play, my onbash Shira. Behind Tsukuyomi, a massive tower of champagne glasses slowly lowers itself from the ceiling. It sparkles under the lights of the club. The tower's radiance causes a shadow on Tsukuyomi, converting him into darkness and to night himself. A tower of champagne glasses? Wait, no. It's really... Could it be that this sacred artifact is conceptually a pillar? I'm so pleased that you noticed, Shiro. I am in possession of one of those world pillars, specifically that which stands in support of the world known as Takamagahara. Then, what you said about our meeting, Yora. We have met Michael and Azazos, the representatives from their respective worlds. However, just the possession of a sacred artifact that preserves memories across loops does not make one a representative. Yeah, we figured that out before. L Michael. He is a representative. This is the reverse case for Michael. He's a representative, but he does, does not have a pillar. So there are also, of course, going to be, uh, what's called, pillars that are not representatives. There are some who hold such sacred artifacts, but do not act as representatives. Myself, for instance. Hmm. If your pillar weren't flawed, we wouldn't be getting our ass escaped, it would be. Still, though... You're the best we've got. Gah, this blows. Tetsuya mutters to himself in the shadows. Pillars. Re representatives. I've come to realize I know so little. I'm not even sure I know where to begin with my line of questioning. You're quite frank, Shio. It's good that you understand your limitations. My advice to you is to find a transient who holds a pillar. One who will lend strength to your cause. Tsukiyomi. Can we not ask for you to lend us your aid? Under the present circumstances, I'm afraid I must refuse. You see, I am sure that us outlaws and newcomers will pursue opposing goals. The hell? Are you saying we're gonna be fighting? Whoops. It appears my meaning is currently lost in the two of you. This is what happens without any memory of previous loops. Okay, so it looks like they're gonna be on opposing sides, so they may not necessarily fight. But, uh, it's not in their interests, uh, ultimately, is what's important. I understand. How little I understand. Thank you for your words of advice. I need to think over what you've told us today. Ah, oh dear. I do apologize, but I'm not typically awake at this hour. Not to worry. As it is, we must be off to Ikebukuro soon. Ah, but please, wait one more moment. There's something I'd like to give you two to meet. There's someone I'd like you two to meet. Meet our newest member, Replicant19. Come on over now. With a snap of Tsukiyomi's fingers, a single transient emerges from the shadows. A replicant? Oh wow. Through those zooms I can see. Gazing right into the gaping fissures into the skin of the transient who has appeared before him. Shiro mutters over the mechanical parts made visible. Spot on, Shiro. We have a visitor from the future world of Utopia, alone. Affirmative, I am Model Replicant 19, prototype created in the world Utopia. Please call me R19. 
Replicant 19? What? More importantly, Utopia? Isn't that the world from which all those time traveling... Correct again, Shiro. R19 has the ability to time travel, a technology closely guarded by the Cyborgs you previously battled. That power is more than likely t very closely... T that power is more than likely tied very closely to the loop, which continually resets this Tokyo. Hmm. So Utopia plays a big role in the loop. Since only they know the secret. If you do not take measures to disrupt Utopia's time traveling powers, you will never be able to survive the coming war. To that end, R19 has come to this Tokyo in search of protection. However, the outlaws are not able to fulfill this need. I believe that it would be best for him to join you, Summoners. You see, his creed and ours are polar opposites. His being to protect the law that ours is to break. R19 makes no attempt to escape the bindings of the Replicant 19 Charter. Rather, something somewhere inside of him has begun to question what he should carry out during his predetermined 19 year lifespan. Am I correct to assume that the 19 year f refers to your. Affirmative. That is, that number indicates the number of years for which I have been designed to function. Mm -hmm. To reiterate, meet R19. I feel that he may be able to share invaluable information with you about Utopia. What do you say, R19? The replicant R19 nods in response to Tsukuyomi. It appears that he has no qualms about going with you. What say you, Shiro? We are sorely in need of whatever knowledge we might glean. We would be, gr we would gratefully accept him into our ranks. Very well then. As soon as you're ready to relocate, you can make your way to the summer's portal, R19. Affirmative. Thank you for taking me. I'm looking forward to working with you, R19. Tsukiyomi, may I ask you one question? What is it? I hope that I'm able to answer. Why is it that you're going so far out of your way to help us, if, as you say, our goals have different goals to pursue? Hmm. You have a point. I suppose I can reveal that much. Long ago, I had a younger brother. He was the most soothingly adorable person I have ever known. I loved him to no end, and I was willing to give anything for him. I was even willing to consign myself to the darkness for him. My opinions on who should succeed my brother. Or rather, his memories differ from those from, of my sister, Gabriel, maybe. That one to succeed his memories? My sister believes that his successor is worthy of succeeding my brother himself, not just his memory. I disagree. I mean, my baby brother is just so cute, sexy, strong, and there's no one person who could replace him. I suppose you could call it a matter of sibling rivalry between my sister and me, so feel free to laugh. But I don't believe that I would be able to shun the friends of one who even carries the likeness of my brother. Huh. So... I see. Looks like we have Tsukiyo's and his brother in me. My older sister's name is Amaterasu. Oh, I see. And my youngest brother's name is the hero Takamagahara, Suzano. So Suzano is one of the souls inside the protagonist, maybe. Amaterasu, I see. Amaterasu? So you mean? Hmm, maybe there is a resemblance now that I see it. Yes, one of the 23 sets of memories that resides in your guild master's sacred artifact belongs to my younger brother, Suzano. My older sister, Amaterasu, is somewhat obsessed with your guildmaster. Uh, well, I suppose it would be more accurate to say it's a sacred artifact that she's drawn to. The other representatives probably hold the same outlook, or perhaps worse. There are those who cling desperately to the memories in that sacred artifact, seeing in their air only the one they knew. There are many in this Tokyo who exhibit similar tendencies to my sister. And maybe that one such creature is with your guildmaster even now. Hmm. Uh, 
There might be someone within our guild. Is wizard. What such creature? Okay, so what's my guild master right now? Someone. It's in where the protagonist is right now. There's someone obsessed with his one of the souls inside. As he says this, Tsukuyomi glances up at the disc while glinting in the darkness. Huh. That's a particular way to end it. Someone near the protagonist. Who would be focused? Well, we have with the protagonist, just Ark and the protagonist. Vessels for Faith, too. After your vicious battle with Masashi draws to close, you head to the workshop that was attached to the school. That's right. Sorry, but could you hurry up? What? Snacks? Those rice crackers I have sitting around should be refined. Just hurry it up. We can't do anything until you make a decision. The old man hangs up the phone, then he shouts to whoever might be in the workshop. Hello? Is anyone there? Our guests need something to drink. Ugh. God, I swear. Just sit here for a minute. The guild master should be back soon. The old man stands up to go get drinks, and everyone sits down. It wasn't like the guild master with Ark. Where, where is he? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> like, he, sh they were definitely talking with uh, Kurigami, but I don't even know anymore. The first member of your group to speak is the Kena Seren student in the back, Zolato. This is such a coincidence. I'm so glad to see you, Arison. What are you doing here, Zolato? Are you here for Hakuman? I'm here on a business for Mrs. Hakuman. She told me to come here to get something for the guild. <laughs> What's with that grin? Uh, did something happen? No, it's just... This might be a bit personal, but... So Lala sniffles heavily and looks... And a look of relief across his face. It's just that I feel so at ease when I talk with you. I was so worried earlier. Plus, when I'm by your side, I always feel like I'm rel reliving my old memories. It's as though I'm remembering my lost long sibling. Oh, long lost? Yeah. I used to be a great brother. Did I say something weird? I can't tell what sort of face that is you're making. Curse these crying eyes of mine. If I weren't crying so much, I could actually see your face. Damn! I was wondering, but behind those sunglasses... Mm -hmm. The lot of voices the affirmative and goes on to remove his tinted visor. It looks like a special visor, but you're really just wearing it to hide your missing eyes, aren't you? Exactly. A bodyguard with no eyes risks startling the guests. That's why Miss Chris Hockman had this tinted visor made for me. Whoa! That was was custom made for you? Can I see it for a moment? This is nice. It must have cost you an arm and leg. <laughs> there you are, I could have caught being such a fucking creeper. <laughs> Uh, really? I'll have to take Mrs. Trust Hockman later then. Yeah. Uh, who are you? Name yourself! Kurogami, you're back already. Weren't you meeting that rocket mad friend of yours? Turns out they're running late, so you're gonna come back straight here instead. I got a little time to kill. In that case, sorry to keep you all waiting. Our young guildmaster has finally arrived. Oh no, I hardly even noticed the time to fly by. I was so caught up in remembering of the past. I can't believe everyone took off all at once. I faced this at least should have been here somewhere, but I can't find him at all. Where the hell did he get to? Ugh. Not that you mention it, it's, he has seemed a bit strange recently, perhaps. It seems like he's worried about something. I mean, he's always worried about something, but still. If you don't like this advice, this isn't really what he sounds like in-game, okay? Just saying. At least that's. I'm getting. I'm trying to get close to it. <laughs> like, his voice just not as fit as body. He's probably just mulling over some great mystery with no solution, as usual. Of all the. By the way, what kind of a guild is this exactly? <laughs> Where are the Kamada Crafters? Ours is a group of secret artifact specialists. And me? 
I'm the Guild Master, Kurogane. I'm a third year at this here Kamatsu Kamino Academy. And I'm Amatsu Tsumara. I'm here to keep an eye on things. As for the rat who gave you a hard time, he's our resident layabout. I'm the Crafter's Samurai for hire. Hey, hold up there, Gramps. You just call me a layabout? I'm a samurai. I'm a, a bodyguard. You hired me, damn it. This is the safest place in Tokyo. We don't need some good-for-nothing samurai for hire. That's what I'd heard before coming here, but how can you really make that claim? The app has spread all throughout Tokyo. You never know when you'll get caught up in the war. Simple. We specialize in secret artifacts, especially the enhancement them. Nobody in this Tokyo can meet us. Besides, if anyone had trouble with their sacred artifacts, we'd be the first place to come crawling to. That's why. If anything were to happen to our guild, it would inconvenience everyone. No one in their right mind would want to attack us. I see, so it's a... A double... A two-point sort of defense. Hmm. They both need them for their resources, as well as they're not able to challenge them safely. I swear, you damn engineer types don't know a thing about war. Things get bad, and neutral territories like this are the first to targets. Ain't that right, professional? Yes, indeed. Traffic guard and the other researchers might just catch you up. Did I read that right? God, these accents. These, uh, uh, ways of speaking dialects. I dare say, if that happened, what value would this territory have over the next? It'd become a war zone. Quick smart. <laughs> If anyone tries to catch up with our research, we'll just use that same time to pull right up, out uh, ahead again. Jolly good, if both fellows have the same amount of time to play with. In my professional opinion, though, hard second thought. We've lasted long, long, long enough, what? So, what's up with all you visitors, anyway? Got questions for us, huh? Maybe about our talk from earlier? But you want to know more about how your face was so one-sided? That isn't too different, uh, difficult to understand. You must simply put in a bit more work before you can fully trust each other. You must know both yourself and the other half. That's the bare minimum of what you should be, what, what you should do before going into battle. To enter a battle without knowing one's allies first is equivalent to going in blindfolded. Imagine what if the ally you have so blindly put your trust in has been out to deceive you all along, or maybe they don't want to trick you. Might just not be telling you the whole truth. Might even pin the blame on you for your trouble. You must treat an instrument that same, the same as you would your very own armor leg. Once you truly kn it, know it inside and out, it, then it becomes an extension of your body. Ugh, the professionals know a hell of a lot more about this, so... Why are we even sticking our noses in it? Anyway, see you again in battle, Arathon. Oi! Wait, Musashi! Ugh, he's gone. If I had a coin, he really needs to learn this lesson. He need, really needs to learn to listen. Let it go- Let it go- <laughs> Kurokana's voice transforming into Akira Naka. Let it go, Cramps! Musashi's just trying to help us out. Probably. Now then. Welcome, one and all, to the home of Kamata Crafters. We specialize in upgrade, modifications, and repair of sacred artifacts. Kurogane turns towards you and Art, extending a hand. Your reputation precedes you. I look forward to seeing what you can do. Nice to meet you, Kurogane. I'm Arison. I feel like we've met before. In maybe some sort of island. Have we met before? Hmm. Hmm. Kurogane gets awkwardly close, studying her face. Uh, sorry. I must have picked that up from Grant since we spent so much time together. I do feel as though we might have met before, but I can't for the life of me say where or when. Now, let's shake! As you grasp Kurogami's outstretched hand, something about it feels a little off. Hmm? Oh, my prosthetic? Did its unnatural coolness put you off? I just upgraded it to a new model. Must not, I must not have set the temperature correctly. Mm -hmm. Did you make it yourself? Yep, I modified my sacred artifact to create a prosthetic limb. That's amazing. A sacred artifact can be prosthetic? 
and it can change shape? In short, anyone's sacred artifact is really a part of their own body to begin with. Huh. I see. A part of their body? Sacred artifacts can conform to the structure of the living beings. They're like living organisms, and yet not at the same time. They're like a secondary movement device, just behind natural muscles. They can be a seven sense of sorts. To put it scientifically, scientific sacred artifacts are capable of fully conforming with their own physical form. Or well, perhaps it would be more accurate to say that living organisms display similar properties to the sacred artifacts. Huh. Hello there! That's a lot to utilize for sacred There's a There are a lot of ways to utilize sacred artifacts. Can you make anything other than a prosthetic arm? All the members of my guild have done the same. Isn't that right, Gramps? Yeah. I looked through the furnace too much when I was younger, and I lost my son in one of my eyes. Huh. So your eyes, you're like me. Yeah. I replaced my eye with a, the eye of a dragon, a sacred artifact I tinkered with. I'm just trying to say that you've got nothing to worry about as far as your order goes. All right, Zalotl? Uh, okay. What in the world did Mr. Hawkman order? <laughs> did he order the new set of eyes? Uh, wait, is your body a battle zone? What about when you're on battle? Does your arm start? Wait, is your body? You can usually only use your sacred artifact inside, inside the sealed battle zone created by app, but that's not the only way. Oh, we're learning more. Hang on. Under certain conditions, if you're in a closed off space, you can use your sacred card artifact. By that definition, the inside of the owner's body is a closed off space, a battle zone. If your sacred artifact is buried inside your body, then you can use your rule without the help of the app. Huh. So anyone with prosthetic sacred artifacts has an advantage over non prosthetic ones, just in virtue of being able to use it anywhere. Wow, you really do know a lot about sacred artifacts. I wonder if you would mind teaching us a little more. Please, we need to know more. I'm begging you. Oh ho! For a youngster, you're awfully interested in this sort of technical stuff. Go ahead, ask away. Sure! What do you want to know? I'll teach you anything you want. Uh, I'm, not good. I'm just gonna ignore that second one. Thank you so much. So, what do you want to know? Ask me anything, even if I might not be able to answer. Please, take a look at these. Ark extends their summoning emblem and speaks the chant to summon a transient. As I do, three sacred artifacts materialize before the group. What are? Invoked by their summoner, Searcher's Helmet, Babylon's Chalice, and Azathoth's Drone appears before the onlookers. I held packs with several transients, but they have now been reduced to not more than sacred artifacts. I don't understand why I can't summon them. If you know something, anything. Amatsumara responds, choosing his words carefully. I can't say for sure, but it seems possible that those transients fulfilled their roles. I remember them saying something of that sort before. Forgive me if I'm being rude, but what were those transients to you? I have reason to tell her that you had a relationship typical of a summoning pact. If one has become a summoner, then both parties in a pact obviously wagered their souls on it, but... They were my one and only family, also unrelated by blood. Ugh. Kurogane and Amatsumara glanced at each other, then back to Ark. Is that so? If that's so... Yes. I really hope that what I'm about to say isn't too cruel. Let me share with you some knowledge about sacred artifacts passed down in my home world of Takamagahara. Okay, so... Not only are rules and roles carried between systems, but also sacred artifacts. Makes sense? Well, obviously, there are pillars. Those who succeed, sacred artifacts are bound by roles and rules. Those dictate not only how they live, but also how they die. Once the wheeler has died for their cause, neither their heart nor their soul serves any further purpose. 
transients who carry out their roles and leave their memories behind in the world within the sacred artifacts. They leave this world. Their hearts are useless, so you're attracted to say that the heir to a sacred artifact should be capable of drawing those memories out. Huh. Once the wielder has died for a cause, neither their heart nor their soul is serving any purpose. So it's just memories. And the heir of the sacred artifacts, that would be Arth, I suppose, um, are able to draw those memories out. But there's only memories left. Yet, there's always the possibility that they could be drawn in themselves and get lost in the memories of a previous wielder. Hmm. That sounds oddly familiar. Oh, wait, right. Alice and Yogg Shiro. Yeah. That happened to Shiro before. He was taken over by those memories. Hmm. I've heard the results can be dramatic if the essence of the previous owner was drastically different from the current one. However, what manifests is simply the memories of the previous owner, not the actual incarnation of that being. I'm sorry if this was a cruel... I'm sorry if that was cruel of me to say. It's alright. I appreciate your explaining it to me. That said, if I'm right, then it's possible that their desires in coming to Tokyo were fulfilled. I'm sure that doesn't make you feel any- Oh. No, that was- He said that. My bad. That said, if I'm right, it's possible their desires in coming to this Tokyo were fulfilled. I'm sure that doesn't make you feel any better, but... On the contrary. Hark? Please don't look at me like that. I'm okay. Really. Art clutches the three sacred artifacts to their chest, staring down at them. They smile and say, My family is inside of these. They're still with me. That's good enough for me. I've been entrusted with the duty of, to continue on toward the future. Just knowing that, I think, I can continue on, even though I am alone. You aren't alone. I'm here for you. Me? And the rest of the summoners. We stand with you. Arathen. I see. Thank you. You're so strong, being able to say that. Even though you were dumped here in this world all alone. The dumped? All alone? That's why I understand. I started off alone too. I know how hard loss can be. I suppose this is a sort of strange mutual experience between us guildmasters. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, uh, I can't keep myself from crying. Uh, oi, come on, get it together. This isn't the time to cry. As though the floodgates have opened up. Tears flow freely from the eyes of the two crafters. <laughs> you, could use a, you could fill a pool with those tears. As I get older, I just can't help but cry sometimes. Uh, anyway, let's wrap this up for now. Sorry. I just won't end up rambling to you like an old man I am. Not at all. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. Ugh. Sorry. When I was a kid, a fatal accident tore my parents away from me. That was when Gramps here took me in, and he and the rest of the guild raised me, you see? That's why I can't treat all this like someone else's problem. That's why I can't help treat him like the baby of the village, you know? <laughs> oh dear. As it happens, there are a lot of good masters who have complicated family histories like us. Now that I think of it, all of us good masters, we're all. We're all arson! Oh, what? Huh? Why are you grabbing my shoulders? I'm not ready for the next step. You know? I feel really close to you. Like this isn't our first time meeting. If you ever have anything on your mind, don't hesitate to confide in me. I'll teach you anything you want. If you ever need any help with sacred effects, leave it to me! Thank you, Kurogane. I'm counting on, bro. Yeah. Bro? Bro? 
In that case, just let your big bro take care of you. Oh yeah, how, how about I take you up on my rocket sometime? Did you say rocket? Yes, that's what I'm researching. Do you like space? Actually, a friend of mine who I promised to go into space with someday is coming over right now. Space. Like, let alone leaving the walls of Tokyo, you're leaving space. As if perfectly timed to Kuragani's announcement, the interphone's buzzer rings throughout the workshop. Oh, here already? Sorry, let me just go get my friend in. Just a minute! I'll be right there! Kuragani runs excitedly to the door, flinging it open. Standing outside is Lone Lion Therian. Mmm. Oz? Oz? What secrets are you holding? Um, sorry, I'm running like Kuragani. Uh, you are, uh, in the middle of something? Nice to meet you, Oz. You're fine. Just wait here for a minute. S sorry, I made plans with Oz before you dropped him. I hate to cut and run, but would you mind if I head off for now? Uh, thanks for everything. See you. Sorry, I'm just gonna borrow Kudagami for a little while, if, if that's okay. I guess I'll see you all later. Come on, Oz. I want to show you my rocket. I've improved. Wow, he seems so placid. That's a whole new kind of cowardice if you ask an expert like me. Oh, and thanks for the tea and the rice crackers. Now, how about we get started? So, Lottle, come with me to the back room. This requires some sensitive work. The rest of you need to be careful. Uh, what are you gonna do? I'm, I'm so nervous. Can I just pick up the package and leave? <laughs> you have nothing to be scared of. You'll love it. We'll be done soon. Ah! Amatsuma grabs the screaming Zolato by the base of his tail and tries to drag him into the back room. The rest of you, just wait here for a while, okay? If anyone shows up, I'll be sure to fill them in everything that just happened. Okie dokie. A guild member named Aces that should be returning soon, so feel free to ask him anything you want. He's a big man with red hair and a dark tan. He can be a tad meek, but he's a skilled craftsman. Let's get started. Come with me, Zolotl. I'm not sure what's going on, but I'll try my best. Please, make sure it doesn't hurt. Oh, jeez. They are gonna be a new pair of eyes. Can you wait here for me? I want to take a little walk and have a look around. I need to take a razor, but don't worry. I'll be back soon. Feel free to take your time. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, after that revelation, I wouldn't blame them. Take all the time you need. Wrestlers for Faith, part 3. And battle. Lots of blowing units. 